darkness, the slab of iron like a starless night overhead. She'd awoken in here, had been here for a long time. Long enough she'd relieved herself. Hadn't cared. Perhaps it had all been for nothing. The queen who was promised, promised to die, to surrender herself to fulfill an ancient princess's debt to save this world. She wouldn't be able to do it. She would fail in that, even if she outlasted Maeve. Outlasted what she might have glimpsed lay beneath the queen's skin. If that had been real at all. Against Erewhon there had been little hope. But against Maeve as well? Silent tears pooled in her mask. It didn't matter. She wasn't leaving this place. This box. She would never again feel the buttery warmth of the sun on her hair, or a sea-kissed breeze on her cheeks. She couldn't stop crying, ceaseless and relentless, as if some dam had cracked open inside her the moment she'd seen the blood dribble down Maeve's face. She didn't care if Cairn saw the tears, smelled them. Let him break her until she was bloody smithereens on the floor. Let him do it over and over again. She wouldn't fight. Couldn't bear to fight. A door groaned open and closed. Stalking footsteps neared. Then a thump on the lid of the coffin. How does a few more days in there sound to you? She wished she could fold herself into the blackness around her. Cairn told Fenris to relieve himself and return. Silence filled the room. Then a thin scraping. Along the top of the box as if Karen were running a dagger over it. I've been thinking how to repay you when I let you out. Aelin blocked out his words, did nothing but gaze into the dark. She was so tired, so, so tired. For Terrison, she had gladly done this, all of it. For Terrison, she deserved to pay this price. She had tried to make it right, had tried, and failed. And she was so, so tired. Fireheart. The whispered word floated through the eternal night. A glimmer of sound, of light. Fireheart. The woman's voice was soft, loving. Her mother's voice. Aelin turned her face away. Even that movement was more than she could bear. Fireheart, why do you cry? Aelin could not answer. Fireheart. The words were a gentle brush down her cheek. Fireheart, why do you cry? And from far away, deep within her, Aelin whispered toward that ray of memory, Because I am lost, and I do not know the way. Cairn was still talking, still scraping his knife over the coffin's lid. But Aelin did not hear him as she found a woman lying beside her. A mirror, or a reflection of the face she'd bear in a few years' time, should she live that long. Borrowed time. Every moment of it had been borrowed time. Evelyn Ashriver ran gentle fingers down Aelin's cheek, over the mask. Aelin could have sworn she felt them against her skin. You have been very brave, her mother said. You have been very brave for so very long. Aelin couldn't stop the silent sob that worked its way up her throat. But you must be brave a little while longer, my fire heart. She leaned into her mother's touch. You must be brave a little while longer, and remember. Her mother placed a phantom hand over Aelin's heart. It is the strength of this that matters. No matter where you are, no matter how far, this will lead you home. Aelin managed to slide a hand up to her chest, to cover her mother's fingers. Only thin fabric and iron met her skin. But Evelyn Ashriver held Aelin's gaze, the softness turning hard and gleaming as fresh steel. It is the strength of this that matters, Aelin. Aelin's fingers dug into her chest as she mouthed, The strength of this. Evelyn nodded. Cairn's hissed threats danced through the coffin, his knife scraping and scraping. 
Evelyn's face didn't falter. You are my daughter. You were born of two mighty bloodlines. That strength flows through you, lives in you. Evelyn's face blazed with the fierceness of the women who had come before them, all the way back to the fairy queen whose eyes they both bore. You do not yield. Then she was gone, like dew under the morning sun. But the words lingered, blossomed within Aelin, bright as a kindled ember. You do not yield. Cairn scraped his dagger over the metal, right above her head. When I cut you up this time, bitch, I'm going to... Aelin slammed her hand into the lid. Cairn paused. Aelin pounded her fist into the iron again. Again. You do not yield. Again. You do not yield. Again. Again. Until she was alive with it. Until her blood was raining onto her face, washing away the tears. Until every pound of her fist into the iron was a battle cry. You do not yield. You do not yield. You do not yield. It rose in her, burning and roaring, and she gave herself wholly to it. Distantly, close by, wood crashed, like someone had staggered into something, then shouting. Aelin hammered her fist into the metal, the song within her pulsing and cresting, a tidal wave racing for the shore. Get me that Gloriella! The words meant nothing. He was nothing. Would always be nothing. Over and over she pounded against the lid. Over and over that song of fire and darkness flared through her, out of her, into the world. You do not yield. Something hissed and crackled nearby, and smoke poured through the lid. But Aelin kept striking, kept striking until the smoke choked her, until its sweet scent dragged her under and away. And when she awoke chained on the altar, she beheld what she had done to the iron coffin. The top of the lid had been warped. A great hump now protruded, the metal stretched thin, as if it had come so very close to breaking entirely. On a dark hilltop overlooking